We've got some breaking news here for you guys on Celtics Today by Chat Sports. ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski, he dropped a Woj bomb on us on Friday night. But thankfully, it was actually a pretty optimistic Woj bomb, in my opinion, because the headline, Boston Celtics center Chris Stapps Porzingis, could have been a lot worse. But he did tell us that he will miss Game 1 and Game 2 of the Eastern Conference Finals. We actually already kind of expected this. If you guys want a little bit more detail on that, we did just post a video on Celtics today describing, personally, what I think the plan should be for Chris Stapps Porzingis moving forward here in the NBA postseason. But Woj did go on to say there is optimism that KP could return in this series. And that's great news because whether or not the Celtics do decide to play him in the Eastern Conference Finals, it does sound like that if he is ready to go in the middle of this series, he should be hopefully 110% ready to go if the Celtics do make it to the NBA Finals. As of right now when I'm making this video, it looks like the Knicks game is actually about to tip off. Of course, they're playing the Indiana Pacers for Game 6. And if the Knicks do win, then we'll be playing the New York Knicks in the Eastern Conference Finals. But if the Pacers win, then we've got a Game 7. If you guys want all the latest information from your Boston Celtics, very free and very urgent, well, this is the place to be. Chat Sports Celtics today, we've got everything that you guys need, including going live for every single Boston Celtics game. And as always, even if not in the most traditional Chat Sports studio, we always tell you guys the latest about your team. And let's talk about Chris Stats Porzingis, because the Celtics did win round, five, round 1 and Round 2 in 5 games, which is always great to hear. But Chris Stats Porzingis did get hurt in the middle of round one against the Miami Heat. The Celtics went to close that one out. They played the Cleveland Cavaliers, albeit a little bit uh, hurt Cleveland Cavaliers. No Donovan Mitchell, no Karis LeVert, no Jared Allen, but they ended up taking them in five as well. And I'll be honest, if the Celtics do end up playing the Knicks without Chris Stapps Porzingis, as it looks like at least for game one and game two, they still have the healthier roster going up against the Knicks. The Knicks are without Julius Randle, Mitchell Robinson, Boyan Bogdanovich, as of right now in game six versus the Pacers, OG and Anobi. And if they do make it to a game seven, there's only going to be one day of rest in between that Sunday and Tuesday for when the Eastern Conference Final does kick off in TD Garden. So it does look like that Chris Das Porzingis, Al Horford, Luke Cornett, they're all going to have to keep being communicating with each other. They're keep going to have to working, helping each other out as KP continues this rehab. And Al Horford's really going to have to take over the reins here moving forward in the Eastern Conference Finals, at least for two more games. But here's the thing that I have noticed, and this is what's good about KP only missing these first two games as of right now, is that Al Horford, when he does have two days of rest, he's extremely efficient. When he only has one day of rest, he's still pretty efficient. So there is no wrong what you can do with Al Horford here. He averages about 10.7 points per game when he has two or more days of rest. He averages about 7.8 points per game when he only has one day in between. And because you will be playing game one and game two without Chris Stats Porzingis, he will only have one day of rest in between with that Wednesday. But the good news is, thankfully, the Celtics were the first team in the NBA to clinch their conference final seed. So they do have a plenty of time to rest and really make sure that KP has everything that he needs. So I have a question for you guys. Go ahead and give me your one-word reaction to Chris Stapps Porzingis missing the first game and the second game of the Eastern Conference Finals here. I'm just going to go ahead and say my word is understandably. Understandably, he's going to miss game one and game two. We kind of already planned for that. And I do want to talk about how I am actually – okay with Chris Stapps Porzingis not playing in the Eastern Conference Finals. I know, I know, that's kind of a controversial thing to say. Obviously, I want KP to play in the Eastern Conference Finals. He's the, he's the Tingus Pingus. He's the unicorn, for crying out loud. But I do have a lot of faith in the Celtics to be able to beat the New York Knicks and the Pacers without KP. And it may not be pretty. Oh, it's going to be a dogfight if they have to go in there without their big man, Chris Stapps Porzingis. But like I said, because the Knicks roster is so hurt right now and while the Indiana Pacers roster is not hurt I still like that matchup just a little bit better here for the Celtics and personally I do think that the Pacers would be a slightly easier opponent than the Knicks just because there's not that rivalry mixed in there of course you got the New York and the Boston fans in there as well so with that being said I don't think Chris Stapps Porzingis should come back in the Eastern Conference Finals unless they go down in a series. And I think I'm going to stand by that right now. The Celtics have been doing pretty good. And Chris Stapps' number one thing here is that he doesn't want to re-aggravate 
the calf injury. And we've seen this injury before. We saw this with Giannis Tenacumpo, who was knocked out in the first round, didn't even see the playoffs. We saw this with Joe Burrow, with the Cincinnati Bengals in the NFL season, that the calf is something you really don't want to mess with. And knowing Chris Dasporzingis' history here, he only has played 50% of his NBA games in his career, I would really make sure. Until you really need Chris Dapps, I would not signal the bat signal. What is it? Like the bat? You know what it is. The bat in the sky. I'm not a big superhero person. Never mind. You get my point. I wouldn't call on KP until you absolutely need it. And I'm not Joe Missoula, so I understand what they will ever decide to do. And I do realize why you would call Chris Stapps back the minute you can. Because he averages over 20 points per game for the Celtics. No, he's not the leading rebounder. That's Jason Tatum's job. But he still grabs about 7.2 boards. And going up against Miles Turner or Isaiah Hardenstein is going to be a tough task for both Al Horford and Luke Cornett. I don't think I would play Xavier Tillman that much regardless of who you play in the Eastern Conference Finals just because I don't think he has the height that's needed down low going up against these bigs. And I do find his defense just to be a bit too slow for the playoffs just right now. He's more of a, a stockier more strong guy down low, whereas Al Horford and Luke Cornett have that height. You saw Jared Allen, his wingspan, his height really took advantage of the paint in Game 5, especially when he dropped over 30 points. So you do want Chris Das Porzingis back as soon as you can get him. I understand that. I just would rest him as long as you possibly can. But the good news is... Good news here is that Adrian Wojnarowski, ESPN, is saying that he's rehabbing really well right now, and that's great. It could have been a lot worse. He's been out since April 30th, and boy, do we miss him. Don't get me wrong, but I do think that Chris Dasporzingis can be a game changer here, and I think New York and the Pacers are going to throw everything they possibly have at the Celtics here because this is the team to beat, especially in the Eastern Conference. So I could see them maybe getting down in a series going up against the Knicks. I could see that happening. I don't want that to happen, obviously, but the Knicks are playing really gritty right now. But they have been also having a lot of really high emotion running playoff games, and at some point I do think the Knicks may burn out, which is to our advantage here without Chris Stapps Porzingis. So still dealing with that soleus strain, which is pretty much a calf strain in that right calf there, but he's been working on his mid-range jumper, hasn't really shot from downtown, not nearly, not that I have seen from his warm-ups ahead of the Cleveland Cavaliers games. He did warm up in game four. He's been posting on his Instagram. He's been tweeting about Al Horford, and we know Al Horford still has a lot of gas left in the tank for being 37 years old. We saw that in the game five performance when he dominated. TD Garden and took that win home to just put the Cleveland Cavaliers away. So I know Al Horford is going to do what he needs to do. He's got that dog in him, which is why I'm saying maybe KP should take all the rest that he possibly needs. Barring any setback, he is expected to be okay for the Eastern Conference Finals, just not for Game 1 or Game 2, which is extremely unfortunate. But we did anticipate this just a little bit here, as we did see Giannis Tenacumpo, who said right after the Bucks did lose the first round that he wasn't even close to returning. So this is great news to at least have KP on the right track because there were some speculations that maybe he wouldn't be okay for the rest of the season. That is out the door. Adrian Wojnarowski has the latest and so do we here at Chat Sports. So going ahead and hit that sub button for me if you guys have not already. Nonetheless, spam KP in the comment section below if you've made it this far in the video and you want to send KP a little bit of extra love during his rehab process for that Solia strain. Go on ahead and hit that sub button for me. We've got the latest right here at Celtics today by Chat sports.